Hey, everybody. This is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner. And this week, I took a field trip to Danley Sound Labs, which is in Georgia. It's about a four and a half, five hour drive for me. Took the day off of work, packed myself a sack lunch like you used to do when you were in grade school, and actually made it a field trip. Took a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with me, ate it on the way over there. Uh, had fun sitting in traffic for a while, managed to hit every single back road uh, trucker that is known to man, every construction zone, but finally made it over there. I uh, got to the place and was able to do a tour of Danley Sound Labs. So that's what this video is going to be about. And I don't really have any reviews, so I don't want anybody to get confused and thinking that's what this is. It's strictly just me talking about my experience for a few hours, meeting Tom Danley and the guys that work with him and some of the people that work for him. And I do want to give Tom a shout. I want to give Mike a shout as well for kind of leading the tour and allowing me to check out their facilities. The highlight of my trip by far, obviously, was getting to talk with Tom about some of his designs. While there, I was able to audition a couple of speakers from Danley Sound Labs. The main one that I was going to audition was the Hyperion. And the Hyperion that I got to listen to was a prototype. I'll throw a picture of it here. And as you can see, it is pretty much in, I would consider raw form. You know, it's not finished or anything like that, but you get an idea. And this speaker uses a Synergy horn with a pair of 15 inch woofers for each speaker. And what I mean about dynamicism is just, you know, the difference between low quiet passages to higher output passages, or let's say if a vocalist gets right up on the microphone and is kind of talking softly and then they start screaming. Well, the recording is done in such a way that it allows you to detect the difference between the low passage and the high passage without clipping or extreme compression, then you know, a good set of speakers will relay that to you and they'll relay it almost make you jump back. And there were a few tracks that they played for me that I went, whoa, you know, like, holy cow, the, the singers, now they're screaming at me. Most speakers tend to suffer compression when you go from low output to high output instantaneously. And that's why I do some testing for instantaneous compression. And another thing that I noticed about these speakers is they could play at high output levels for a long time. And this was literally the first time I've ever heard a pair of speakers that I could listen to for, you know, 10 minutes longer uh, without having any ear fatigue. And it's really quite surprising. I don't know the SPL levels that I listened at. I didn't take my meter with me. I, I thought about taking my iPhone out, but I wouldn't, didn't want to look like a super nerd, although they probably wouldn't have minded. But I can tell you that if I had to guess, I'm saying that on average, I was probably listening to 95 dB Maybe, maybe more, because uh, I do have certainly experience listening to loudspeakers when I'm trying to stress test them. And for extended periods of time, I mean, 95 dB, that's way too loud for most people, and your ears start to get tired and they fatigue. Man, I didn't have that at all with these speakers. It was incredible. I couldn't believe it. Like, I kept expecting at some point that I was going to have ear fatigue, and, or, and my right ear tends to get a little, maybe even painful, I guess is the best way to describe it. But you know, I was listening to those speakers for a long time at pretty high output levels, and I never suffered ear fatigue. And I was really amazed by that. And I, I told the guys there that, that I've never had a speaker that does that. I don't know why that is, but it's very interesting. Another thing that popped out to me about these speakers were the size of the, uh, the soundstage. So, of course, it had great depth. And I say, of course, I mean... Uh, coaxial type designs tend to have great soundstage depth. That's that's been my experience, certainly more so than a standard, you know, two or three way with a tweeter mid range woofer mounted in that kind of fashion. When you when you layer the speakers up, you get the voice coils lined up directly, perfectly right, and everything is time aligned well. Just the soundstage depth really does seem to increase. I'm not sure how to really that, relay that in data yet, but. Maybe some point I'll be able to make a little bit more sense of it. Tom had some input on that as well, but I don't want to speak for him and I don't want to mischaracterize what his opinion of that was. So I won't dive into that. I'll just say that my experience thus far has led me to believe that coaxials will tend to provide a more deep soundstage. And I heard that with these speakers. Uh, the soundstage width with certain recordings was very, very wide and surprisingly so with a couple of recordings that they used where the recordings seemed to have some little tricks in them, you know, and these are store-bought recordings, nothing fancy that they had done to it. And as a matter of fact, Mike was uh, streaming stuff off of his iTunes account, you know, so nothing fancy going on there. 
all commercial music, the size of vocals were, I mean, multiple feet high. I've never heard a speaker that does that. And usually when I hear something that does something like that, it, it's because it's a split stage. And what I mean is a tweeter will be defining itself and a mid bass or mid range may be defining itself as well. So you get kind of a split stage where there's no distinct um, focus region, for lack of a better word. So you can hear a, a, the vocal from up here as well as down here, and it's separated by the speaker. Usually that's that's a phase issue, a lobing issue, maybe a timing issue, and they're kind of all related. But with these speakers, I didn't hear that. What I heard was just a very tall vocalist, and it tripped me out. Now, is that right or wrong? I don't know. I, I would tend to believe that that's right, but I can't tell you that that's absolutely right. It's just my intuition of what I heard led me to believe that there was nothing um, wrong about what I was hearing. It just, the presentation was unlike anything I've ever heard before, truthfully. Uh, let's see, what else? So the, I mentioned the output, I mentioned the dynamicism, and I mentioned, you know, the, the sound of the images in the soundstage. So not just the vocals, but, you know, images in the soundstage, they might be, they might be tightly focused right here. They might be spread out a little bit, but it was never to the, if, to the point where if they were spread out, you know, I thought it was because of a mismatch in directivity because I've experienced that before. I, I mentioned that in a few reviews. I think the Klipsch Heresy 4 was a speaker I mentioned about that. I think the JBL HDI 3800 was a speaker that I mentioned about that as well, at least in, in regards to the height, uh, I guess, discontinuity, for lack of better words. So, yeah, I mean, as far as soundstage characteristics go, A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, uh, output, A++, plus, plus, tonality. Now, this is the thing where everybody kind of seems to differ a little bit, and, and people seem to differ a little bit as well as what they like in soundstage. But, you know, people, some people prefer like a boost to high or they want more bass and all, they want these things. And so when I give my subjective evaluations, you know, I take my notes and I write down things that maybe sound a little bit off to me. And with a bad speaker, it's really easy for me, at least, to define the things I don't like about it. If there's a resonance at 200 Hertz, there's a resonance at 200 Hertz. Um, and when you go higher in frequency, that's when it starts to become a little bit more ambiguous to me. My, my areas of, of probably better judgment are in the lower vocal region because I'm just more tuned into resonances and things like that. Those, they tend to bother me more so than, you know, specific frequencies like 4K and above. Uh, when you start getting above that, unless it's really, you know, stand out, then maybe I'm not as keen to notice the issue as much. So, you know, we're all a little bit different in, in those regards. And sometimes I notice issues that others have no idea there and sometimes vice versa. But with these speakers, I never heard an issue. I didn't hear anything that stood out um, badly. So after the demo, you know, they were kind of like, well, you know, what do you think? And I just told them. With these speakers, there's really not much for me to say because it's easier for me to critique a speaker than it is for me to say it's good. Because when a speaker's good and it's firing on, on all cylinders, it's just awesome. It's, it's incredible. There's really nothing to say about it. I mean, what are you going to say? I like the highs. I like the mids. I like the lows. Right? I mean, that's, that's what you've got to say. So <laughs> you can mail it in at that point. Like, okay, good speaker. Thumbs up. Buy it. I guess I could say that. I know some of you are curious about price, and I did ask the guys there what the price was. They told me what their expected street price is. I don't know if it's something that I'm free to say, so I'm just not going to say it because I don't want to speak out of turn. And that price could change. I, I just don't know. Uh, the base on these speakers, the Dual 15s, I don't know if they're ported or if they're sealed. I really don't know. And I guess the good thing is I couldn't tell either way. So if they are ported, great. And if they are sealed, great. All I do know is that these are full range speakers. These aren't, I can't tell you the number of bookshelf or I'm sorry, I can't tell you the number of floor standing speakers that I've listened to with multiple woofers. I can't tell you the number of home theater systems that I've listened to with multiple subwoofers that just really don't dig down to the depths of 20 Hertz and, and certainly not the teens. I mean, floor standing speakers that I've tested thus far, most of them, if you're lucky, they'll get down to 40 hertz. And it's, it's kind of sad because you see a speaker with multiple six or, excuse me, multiple eight-inch woofers, and you think this thing's going to get down low into the 30s, 
and I'll be good to go. Most of those speakers just don't do that. Actually, all the ones that I've listened to so far do not do that. Uh, but these speakers absolutely do. They just get down. I mean, if, if I had to guess, I'm saying you're probably talking about an F3 sub 20 hertz. Don't shoot me. Don't come after me if I'm wrong about that. The spec is released and I'm wrong about that. But based on what I heard in room, and now this is a big room. So this isn't like a small little conference room that is easy to pressurize. This is a big like warehouse sized type room. Um, and yeah, the dual 15s had no problem. I mean, it was shaking walls. I was hearing stuff rattling around. And uh, I even made the comment, you guys are probably going to sell these to people who have bunkers because if they're going to crank them up, dude, stuff's going to be rattling all over the place. And the cool thing about that as well, and this may have something to do more with the room, is that a lot of times, you know, when you're talking about bass, even if the bass is in front of you, it can still, the way it's distributed with the modes, it can still actually sound like it's somewhere else in the room, behind you, to the side of you, et cetera. But I didn't really get that feeling. A couple of times I would, I would feel a resonance in my seat. I'm going to guess like 40 to 50 hertz. And that's certainly a room mode. But for the most part, everything stayed right up front. And that was great to give, you know, a proper demo. First full range speaker I've heard that can do easily. I mean, gosh, I had, if I had to guess, I wouldn't be surprised if these speakers did 120 dB or more at, you know, a few meters out without breaking a sweat. I mean, it really, really was incredible. Uh, these are probably not going to be something I can ever afford to buy. And they're, they're very large. I would love to own like three of them and put them in my home theater, you know, upstairs. But I doubt I could even carry part of this thing up the stairs. I'd probably have to hire some movers. I'll just say to those of you who had the means, had the money, or, you know, are really looking to save up toward, toward getting something that you might consider end game thus far. And I've heard $100,000 plus systems on my travels for work in the past, you know, visiting other cities. So I can say this with a good notion of comparison in my mind about what I have heard of six-figure systems. And I can tell you that these would be in game for me today. If I had the money and I was out shopping for speakers, I would say, hey, put me on your list. I want a pair, no doubt about it. They are incredible speakers. I really do look forward to the chance to maybe get to hear them again. And what's kind of neat is while I was over there, I got to talking uh, to the guys and, and you know, we got to talking about the near field scanner, my clipple measurement system. And I said, Hey, would it be cool if I took one of your uh, Synergy horns, your SH 50s, I believe this model uh, home with me, you know, drive it on over and test it out and see what it's like, because it's so, it's so different of a speaker. It's not your, your typical two-way or multi-way speaker, you know, with a front baffle on it. It's so different that I'm sure it's going to pose a pose, I should say, pose a challenge to me as far as, you know, figuring out the best way to measure it on the near field scanner. And I, I want the opportunity, A, to be able to take the speaker home and, and just kind of demo it in my own room, play around with it, and B, to measure the speaker and help me fine tune my ability to measure uh, different speakers, for lack of better words. So I just, one more time, I do want to thank uh, Tom and Mike, um, and, and everybody else that I met at Danley Speakers that day, I really do appreciate, you know, you all taking the time out and just hanging out with me and, and just being some regular dudes and letting the regular dudes show up and, and chat. And it's fun. It's, it's nice to be able to talk to people about this stuff because I know I don't talk about this stuff at work because I know the people that I work with probably think I'm crazy. My boss actually subscribes to my YouTube channel, which I do think is cool. So, uh, Robert, if you're listening, Hey man. And, uh, that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to bail up out of here. But again, I will say that if this is a speaker that you're interested in and you have the means, I would call Danley Sound and go ahead and put in a reservation ASAP. These speakers are incredible. They have a great, great group of people. You can just tell it's a homegrown uh, company. You know, it's just everybody's down to earth. Dudes wearing blue jeans and t-shirts and just kind of chilling and walking around and, you know, doing their thing at work. And it was just a great environment. I would love to support them financially just on, on the personal level. So you're getting that and then you're getting an incredible product. Uh, people who are really geeked and excited about what they're doing and they know that they're doing something that is really original and uh, groundbreaking for the home audio, home fi crowd. So yeah, buy a pair. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.